Um, today I'm going to speak about cost visibility of infrastructure using um, InfraCost tool. Little bit about me. I am a platform engineer at Liquid Reply. And that awesome person is the co-founder of Liquid Reply. <laughs> Hi, Max. <laughs> a little bit more about me. Um, I like watches, non-digital watches, actually. And how many people in this room like watches, non-digital watches? One, two, three. <laughs> OK. People who like watches. Didn't work. People who like watches, do you like this watch? Raise your hand. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Will you buy it? Will you buy it? Thank you. That's what I was asking. <laughs> Before you buy anything in real life, you are asking how much. You go compare prices everywhere, and then you buy what you think is fair for the good quality. But when it comes to, to your infrastructure cost, you just choose things without caring about how much it costs. To be, honest, to be honest also that cloud provider also, they do make it easy for us. They just give you like the cost per cent per hour and then you have to calculate in your brain how much is that or you choose like Chinese methods to calculate. But don't worry, for this problem, the, the team of InfraCost, they created a very good tool. You still be lazy to calculate, but you can use the InfraCost and you see the monthly cost. Today agenda will be like to speak about InfraCost and how InfraCost actually work and well, how to write your own action using GitHub Actions, and whether your company is using monolithic or microservice pattern, we are going to speak about how to adapt our action for both cases. And at the end, I'm going to speak about demo. I'm going to show you demo, actually. I cannot speak about demo. <laughs> um, what's InfraCost? How many people know what's InfraCost? Have used this tool before? One, two, three, amazing. <laughs> So you can tell us what's InfraCost. <laughs> um, InfraCost is developed by InfraCost team, as already mentioned. It's designed to scan Terraform code changes. Obviously, you have to use a Terraform. If you don't use Terraform or, if, or like open Terraform nowadays, you cannot use this tool. It provides an understandable cost estimation for your infrastructure. And the purpose of doing this is to prevent unacceptable costs. Like, you don't wake up in the next morning while your company or your startup lost 10K in one night. So that's the pair. How it works, actually, it just scan your Terraform plan, actually, your Terraform code before you apply it. The purpose of, like, infra cost is not like you, after you apply, you see the cost, no. Before you apply it, before you create your uh, infrastructure, you see the, the cost of it, and you say, uh -huh, why is this and why is that? We should not do this, and we should remove this to a smaller one or a smaller instance. It generates an estimation that you can see it in a pull request, and whether you approve the pull request or not. And you can also integrate it in your CI CD, as we, can, as we are going to do later. Um, well, actually, InfraCost work with different CI/CD tools. If you go to the um, to the documentation of InfraCost, you will see the CI/CD tools that you can integrate it with. But today, we are only interested in the GitHub Actions. Um, you can, if your company uses Jenkins or CircleCI or whatever uh, CI/CD tools, you can go ahead and try to apply it. What you learned today there. So, before we start, we need a little bit of preparation. Obviously, we need to install InfraCost, and then we need to retrieve the API key. In order to retrieve the API key, you need to use this command, infracost configure git API key. 
and the result you will have the key. What will we do with the key? People who actually work with GitHub Actions know that the CLI or any CLI needs the key to run the infra cost. So in case of GitHub Action, we need to store the key in secrets. And the secrets, how do you store it? You go to settings, secrets, action. And then when you click there, uh, you will see this window. In this window, you add the name of the key, and then you add the value of it, and then you save. So that's it. Done, right? Now you are ready to create your own action, to create an action. As I mentioned, that in InfraCost um, documentation, you can see uh, a template how to integrate it with your CI, CLI, CLI, uh, CI/CD tool, like uh, GitHub Action or uh, Jenkins. Copy paste is amazing, right? Like easy, simple. It takes you five minutes. If something went wrong, it will take you ten minutes to finish this. Like simple. You don't even have to understand what is this. Like what's the first line? What is this permission for request? Right? You will never understand it until you try to recreate it. Right? This is from one side. One side, you will be a better engineer if you try to recreate things, understand them, apply them. The second side is security. Like what happened to Look4j could open up, uh, could also happen to InfraCost, right? And then, all of a sudden, your company will be like in danger. And then, yeah, good luck. So, for security practices, you need to write your own action. I know it's not easy, it's not simple, but it's a good practice. You see this, if you can see it, I think I have a problem. <laughs> okay. Here also you can see the InfraCost comment and there is a lot of things you don't understand that what is dash dash repo, GitHub token, what is this? So today we are going to create our own action using a container action. If you are not familiar with container action, um, it is something like in GitHub action, you can have different actions, container action, JavaScript action, or composite action. And today we are going to focus only on container action. Container action has actually three components. The first one is action YAML, second one is docker file, and the third one is entry point, or actually a scripting language, whatever you want, in either Python or script. The main purpose of action YAML is to call actually the, the Docker file. And the Docker file contains the installation steps that the entry point not needs, and the entry point actually has the logic in which you can um, implement like to make your uh, code work. If you are interested in how um, to create a container action or JavaScript action, you can also see the documentation and it's actually step by step like creating Docker file, action YAML and write your code. Oh, sorry. So, Today we are going to speak about it, but before that, let me show you how it works. Here is my action YAML. If you can see in the action YAML, um, it has, you can give it a name, any name, and then description is optional. Actually, you don't have to it, but the main purpose of this YAML, it runs in using Docker and then the Docker file. You specify there is a Docker file need to be, to be called. For branding, I just added it to customize the appearance for the action and to set up the icon to a terminal. So basically, the main purpose of this action is, is to call the Docker file. If you are familiar with Docker file, you will, you will know what is the first line, actually. <laughs> it is the base image of the Docker file. And as usual, Docker file contains just the installation steps of, um, that the action needs. 
So I installed the Terraform file because I'm going to use it later on. I'm going to show you in the demo where I used it. And installing also the Terraform. Uh, the InfraCost, obviously, because I needed to install uh, InfraCost in order to use it in the action. And GitHub CLI to comment my plan and my InfraCost to, to uh, GitHub pull uh, request. And uh, finally, I'm giving permission for entry point and calling the entry point. So I have prepared two entry points for different use cases. The first use, the first entry point is um, if your company is using microservice approach. What does microservice approach means? Means that your uh, company has a, a repo, a, di a single directory, Terraform directory for the service. So, which means that you have only one single Terraform uh, directory in the repository. In this case, it's simple. How are we going to do that? So, we'll explain line by line what this entry point is doing. So the first line is telling that is a bash uh, script. And the second line is comparing your changes in the current branch with the main branch. It says git diff. If you are familiar with diff, uh, command, you will see that is this command is giving you the difference between your branch and the main branch. And actually, I would like to show you the output of this. So my current branch has changes in the InfraCost directory with Docker file, action, basically the files that got changed in the InfraCost repo or the InfraCost directory. So what does this label do, dash dash name only? If I remove this label, it won't give you only the name. It will give you all the changes that happens in this comment or in this branch. It's dirty. You, you cannot see anymore the directories that you want to see the changes in. So it's better that what for our purpose, we need to use the label name, name, dash dash name only. And the second, we are defining an environment variable, which is fetch the first uh, variable or parameter in the command that change. So in our case, it fits the name of the InfraCost, the directory here. I would like to show you also what is this doing, but I need to do this first. Then when I run this command, oh, sorry. What is the expected output? What do you think? Sorry? Uh, not the file, the name of the, the directory that the changes happen in. That's InfraCost directory. So after that, we're going to obviously cd to the directory and then run InfraCost command to break down the cost of your InfraCost. And then after that, um, you, do, you see here also the PR number. Why do we want the PR number? Because InfraCost, in order to comment it to GitHub, they actually require the PR number. And in order to get the PR number, you have the GitHub ref, which contain the, the PR number. And the PR number is the third variable of GitHub ref. If you don't believe me, you can go and check the documentation and then you see that the GitHub ref is the third variable. But in case only of pull request, if, if your pipeline doing something else to push to the branch or doing something else, it's not going to work. So this is in case of microservice. The other case is a monologic. What your company has one single repo 
for all the directories, the Terraform directories for all services the company has, which is actually a best practice in case of repo because your developer team will focus on their repository and your SRE team will focus on their repositories and they're managing their repositories. So what do you think will be the solution and if I have multiple directories, not only one? In case not, not infra cost, another Terraform directory and so on. What should I do? Simple coding problem. <laughs> Any idea? For loop. For loop always solves the, the problem. So in case of you have multiple directories, and this actually we are doing exactly the same, beside that I am asking here, I am looping through the directories. If you have the one single directory, go and actually run Terraform in it. I actually added this Terraform in it to show the plan in the comment where I will show you later in the demo. And then I, I'm commenting it in the line 33. Don't, don't feel afraid, it's really simple and it's just using CLIs, commands. It's, there's no complicated logic. The only logic, the only new logic here is I am looping through the directories I created. And then I go one by one, see the changes, apply the Terraform uh, in it, and then apply the infra cost breakdown. How does this work? I can show you in a while. Okay, here is our um, repository that contains Terraform. I prepared this because I don't have enough time to prepare it live, but I created two services. Imagine it, I, I couldn't come with a better name actually, service one, service two. And then I created the pipeline that is going to be in pull request. Actually, in GitHub Action, you can do on push, on pull request, on workflow call. Why did I use a pull request? I just said it at the beginning. You didn't pay me attention. <laughs> I did it in pull request because otherwise your uh, PR number is not going to be fetched from the GitHub ref because GitHub ref only fetch the PR number. The third variable from uh, GitHub ref is a PR number only in pull request. And other, and other changes in a, in a push or in, in branches, they are different. The GitHub ref is different. So I am calling actually the action that I created and then using infra cost key that I saved at the beginning in the GitHub action secret. So this is a simple Terraform I created actually. I just copy paste it from internet, it's simple. And here I use actually instance and the other service has actually exactly the same, but in a different directory. Well, I would like here also to introduce the InfraCost plugin, which you can download it here writing InfraCost. But this only works if you are using Visual Studio Code. If you are using another IDE, it won't work, like IntelliJ or Sublime or whatever, but it's not going to work. So you use it, you install it, and then you connect it to your GitHub. And the a good things about this is that you can see the cost live. So if I change this to micro, you will see the cost here changed. You see it's loading and it's $10 per month for micro. If for some reason you want to go for medium, you will see it live change which doesn't make any sense. It should be 20 euros. Ah, that's a typo. <laughs> Again, <laughs> let's go for large. It's easy to write large. <laughs> oh God. Okay. 
You see, it's 97 per month if you use a large instance. Um, another thing is our action. We want to use it in case if you are not using Visual Studio Code, you are using something else, we can actually use, see what our action is doing. Uh, we are going to change also on the other service and then we are going to make it also small. In order to make this whole thing work, we have to do actually a PR number, uh, create a PR. So let's go ahead and create a PR. I do get status to see to see what we changed actually. I see only service two. What's service one? I didn't change anything here. Micro. Yeah, now I see changes in two different directories, two different services. So now I go ahead and add them to Service one, main TF, service two, main TF. What? I get commit add, of course. <laughs> okay, get commit minus AM. Now we push our changes and create a pull request. Uh, where is it? As you can see, here is our pull request. I call it demo also and create a pull request. The moment you create a pull request, if you go to actions, Okay. You will see your pipeline running. You can see all the steps. You are building actually your demo and then you are running infra cost. And when it's green, actually we can go ahead and see our PR, what is doing here. It's not done yet, but I can show you that the first, you can see the changes for the first service and the diff, actually the workspace I just created in the entry point. And you can see everything that you created, the VPC, the security group and everything. And you are supposed to see the infra cost. It didn't work. <laughs> And you saw also the plan, the changes also for the second one. And then you are supposed also to see, but I think it doesn't work, but I can show you this locally, what it's supposed to do. For some reason it didn't work, but I will show you here how, can, how it should work. If we run here infra cost break down dash dash. Here you can see that here you can see that the infra cost will show you exactly what happened, um, what what type of instance you choose, and how much it costs, and how many hours will it be used for, and you will see at the end the cost estimation. And each service is how much, and totally you have thirty-one uh, dollar for this for this plan actually. It's simple, you can go ahead and write it for yourself. It's really easy. If you want to know more, you can even read my blog post and then you can apply what I did today. Is this here also step by step? 
If you like it, go ahead and try it. And don't be frustrated if it doesn't work from the first time. It never worked, actually, from the first time. What I want to summarize, actually, copy-pasting is easy. It's easy to use infra cost template, simple. But then there is also downside for security leaks. And you cannot, it's difficult to write your action. It's maybe you are suffering, maybe, maybe it won't work. You need to figure out how to make it work. Nobody going to help you for that. But this will make you a better engineer. And you will understand things better. So I think that's it. If you are interested to discuss about this, you can follow me in LinkedIn, write me in LinkedIn, or this is actually my Twitter. And this is my LinkedIn, it's not Instagram. So, questions? Yes, please. I haven't tried that yet because it's a new topic, but if there is some difficulties, sure they can like they can overcome it and they, they can give a solution. I mean the, the way it works is you the input into Infocos is the plan. So if the plan doesn't change and open I, I think it will work also the same. Okay. But in case it doesn't work, I'm quite sure Infracos they're gonna adapt. Okay. Another question? Not all of you together. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Of course, it can work also with model, but yeah. Yeah, it can work also for different regions, but you need to adapt your pipeline for different regions, not the actual code. This code will work all with all regions, but your pipeline has to, to have the regions as an environment variable. So every time it comes different region, it applies to that region. Yes, please. How do you use Terraform for your cluster? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I think you can also use it. Because provision and auto-scaling group, I don't think they cost per month. This is actually, you are going to Kubernetes cost, a cluster cost, which is Tera Infra cost cannot work there. You, there is also another tools. Maybe I can give another talk about it. It's for like, uh, managing your cluster cost. Okay. Yeah. So for things like par gate and uh, gate, it's not as helpful. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying if it is managing your cluster cost, is it's not. It's only managing before you create your um, infrastructure in the cloud. Yeah. But if it is, if you want to manage your cluster cost. Infra cost is not a good is not a good option for you. So that's it. Thank you for coming. <laughs>